Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today it is pure play. It is where I am just going to start asking myself, what if? What if I put this here? What if I put that there? What if I use this color? And I'm going to make a giant mess all over my art journal page. And at some point it turns around because it kind of goes through a ee, that awkward teenage stage at one point. And I have to admit, I was kind of like, well, I wonder how many layers it's going to take for this to come out of this. And it absolutely did. And when it emerged, what I had was an art journal page that was the land of what if ended up with a map out of all of this mess. Now, not a lot of this page that I'm starting with, this background, is going to be here when I'm done. But I just need to start somewhere, so I grabbed some page that I'd started who knows when in my art journal. Now, I'm going to start by adding some stenciling to this. This does not have to be precise stenciling because this is a what-if kind of play. I am just going to start putting stuff on here and seeing where it takes me. I am not doing a careful job stenciling. It's sloppy, it's messy, and there's no rhyme or reason as to where I'm putting it. I am absolutely following my impulses and just seeing where things go. Really saying, what if I do this? What happens then? Because if I start thinking with my logical left brain, what happens is I don't have as much fun doing it. If I let my creative right brain just kind of follow its impulses and do what it wants, it's a much more enjoyable process. Like right now, that logical left brain is kind of going, why'd you put the yellow there? Does that yellow look the way that you want it to? Are you happy with it? Where's it going? What's the purpose of this? Do you think this is going to be good enough? This is kind of getting ugly. What's the point of putting that green there? So you can see the kind of crazy if I let logical left brain have too much of a say here. Now, logical left brain still kind of whispers to me, but basically right now I am just saying this is a what if page, letting it just be what it will be and just trusting those impulses. Now, having paint on my fingers is a magical feeling to me. So if I've got an opportunity to follow the impulse of finger painting, you better believe I'm going to take that. So I was recently asked by an acquaintance, why do I like art journaling so much? What draws me to it? And this is exactly what draws me to it. It's the fun. It's the play. It's the seeing colors do whatever they're going to do. That for me is the number one draw of art journaling. And the other thing is I like how I feel when I'm done. I always feel good, relaxed, refreshed after I've had some art journal playtime. Now I plopped this stencil called Arched Fountains right on top of all of that juicy yellow paint because it was taking forever to dry. So what I'm doing now is just removing some of the paint with a baby wipe or paper towel kind of thing just to see what kind of look it'll get when I pull some of that paint up. And I'd rather do this than get a heat gun because I'm just, for some reason, not a big fan of heat guns. So when I lift this up and look at it, it did take off some of the yellow paint, but it sure didn't leave much of the pattern behind. But that's okay, because this is a what-if page. Not everything has to be an absolute home run immediately. Well, I'm adding more color here and there because, well, I just like adding more color in places. Not like there's some kind of careful thought through plan here. This is me just saying, what if? What happens if I put this color here or there? Now, at the time I was doing this, I didn't realize it, but this is where the seed really started to blossom, grow, sprout, whatever you want to call it, for what this page would end up meaning for me in the end. Now, I'm going to use some oil pastels because I want to do some writing on here. And I've got plenty of wet paint on this page. And I have learned over and over again. Well, one could say I really haven't learned it because I keep doing it at times. But if you take a pen and write it over wet paint, there's a significant chance you're going to ruin that pen. So that's why I use something like an oil pastel. Because if I get any wet paint on it, I can simply wipe it off. Now, what do I do if I want to write with more of a fine detail with an oil pastel? Well, I can just shave it down with a craft knife. You could say I'm whittling it. And then I can write with it more like a pencil without worrying about ruining anything like, say, all the pens that I have in the past. <laughs> So now as I'm scribble journaling on here, I'm really, really wishing that the pattern that I had on the yellow paint from the arched fountain stencil would pop out a little bit more. I can see it somewhat, but I really want it to be bolder and stronger. So guess what? I can just put that stencil right back on there and do it again. But this time, I'm not going to do it with yellow. I'm going to do it with a darker color. Now, all the stencils that you're seeing me use in this video are from Stencil Girl products that I designed for them, and I'll have links to all of them over on my blog, and there should be a link popping up, or it'll be right below the video that'll take you right over to the blog post with all the links and photos from this video. Now, parts of this page I'm really happy with, and parts of it I have absolutely no affection for. Basically, that's code for saying parts of this are just kind of ugly to me right now. So what I'm going to do is just put some gesso on top of it and see what happens if I do that. 
And as I'm doing this, it turns out there might be a few more areas than I originally expected that I thought could use a little gesso on top of them. And about the time I finished the gesso, I realized polka dot fever may have uh, kind of taken hold here, and I wanted to put more polka dots on the page. Big, pink, wonderful polka dots. But as I was infected, it also was cured pretty quickly by that last pink polka dot. Didn't like that one there, so I totally covered that one back up. And then I just continued playing, doing a lot of the same things that I'd done before, just following those impulses, seeing where it takes me. Now, this wasn't something I could always do. Being able to play, that was something that I rediscovered how to do. Now, if you're not comfortable playing this freely or loosely yet, never fear, there are some ways that you can help yourself. Now, I've got a free workshop called Permission to Play where I'm sharing some of the ways that I rediscovered how to play. And you can check that out over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com. Well, I decided to give this page a title of What If. After all, that's really what this page is for me, a what if kind of page. The stencil that I'm using is called the Ransom Alphabet, and I'm playing around with it. I started it with gesso, and now I'm going to do it with some heavy body white because it just wasn't popping the way I wanted the white to really pop on that. Now, you might notice that I'm not waiting for things to dry in between letters. I'm not doing anything like that, and I'm not getting much smearing from it either. Part of the reason for that is when I put the stencil down, I put it straight down. I'm not going to wiggle it around once it's down because it's wet paint under there. So that's my way of saving a step of having to wait for things to dry. Now, after I finished the word if, I really liked how it popped against the orange, but I didn't like how the word what was looking. Now, I don't have any kind of contractual obligation to keep a layer exactly as I just did it. I am totally allowed to shift directions or change my mind, whatever you want to call it. So I just painted right over the word what. And then what I'm going to do is put the word what back on top of it. And that's my way of doing it instead of, say, trying to paint neatly around something. I'd rather just cover over something and do it again than try and be precise. But by this point in the video, you've probably figured out Taking time thinking or being precise is not what brings me joy when I'm playing in my art journal. Now in the next layer, I'm about to find out what the meaning is for this art journal page. As I put three of these cutouts here, I end up creating the look that makes me think of a forest. And by the way, I would so love to visit a forest that looked like this. And now I can't get the idea of a map out of my head and turning this into some kind of map. Well, to create the towns and that kind of thing on my map, I'm going to use the mask from my Once Upon a Time stencil so I get these little castle towers because if it's a map of what if land, you better believe there are castles all over the place. So not just one little town of them, I'm going to put towns of them all over the place. I mean, after all, if I'm creating the land, I can make it whatever I want it to be. And since I love water and oceans and that kind of stuff, we're going to have at least one seaside town here, maybe two, so I'm going to create some water with the blue. Now the dark blue, well, that's not my favorite kind of water. I like more of a Caribbean blue. So I'm going to change my water around a little bit, and we're going to create a little Caribbean ocean right in the middle of this land. And I think I want my oceanside town to be the biggest town on this map, so I'm going to put some more buildings up there. Not just one row, but we're getting two rows. There's lots of population up. That's the resort town in the land of what if. Now, you remember those old label makers that you'd have to punch each letter? I think they were called like Dynamo or Dino or something like that. Anyway, I've had one, well, forever and haven't used it in such a long time. So what a bonus that I get to use up something that I had and I haven't for so long. That's going to create the titles for my map. So the land of what if is the world, the land, whatever it is. And we've got the ocean of inspiration up there. Because for me, blue water is such a source of inspiration. And what about the cities? Well, this city is called the city of creativity. Now, if there was any land that I could live in, this is so the one I would want to live in. Now, since I can't really move my house there and actually live there, I can at least visit it in my art journal through play and experimentation and just letting myself be free. Well, thanks so much for joining me for the trip to the land of what if. Now, if you've been enjoying this video and like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I have another video out. And of course, don't forget to head on over to the blog at acolorfuljourney.com where I've got things like my newsletter with free downloadable goodies waiting for you. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.